Gary Siegel's freelance l and Eastern Kentucky Division models an imaginary southern extension of the prototype Eastern Kentucky Division. It's an operations-oriented railroad. The railroad was on the NMRA tour for the Long Beach National Convention in 1996 and the Anaheim Convention in 2008. It has been featured in Model Railroader, Railroad Model Craftsman, and Rail Model Journal. The layout models from ha Hazard in the north to Ashland in the south with interchanges with the Norfolk and Western through Norton, Virginia, the Kentucky Northern at Harlan Junction, Kentucky, the Chesapeake and Ohio at Dean, Kentucky, and the LNN's Cumberland Valley sub to Corbin, Kentucky. What you're seeing now is the large Ashland yard at the southern end of the layout, and this is Bishop's Church, a small industrial area just adjacent to Ashland. The Eastern Kentucky Division models an area of coal mines in the Appalachians in eastern Kentucky and in western Virginia. The year is 1971, so both first and second generation diesels are the rule. Operation focuses on coal traffic both on and off the line with mines and coal processing industries distributed in the mountainous Appalachian scenery. Here you can see a, a large uh, viaduct. This is, uh, we call it the Powell Creek Viaduct, but it's modeled after the Copper Creek Viaduct just south of Appalachia. The Eastern Kentucky is still running its own passenger trains. The 1,500 square foot HO scale layout is fully scenic. Crew staff yards at Ashland, Fowler, Dent, and Hazard. Road crews are responsible for mine runs, empty and full coal trains, hot freights, forwarders, local freights, and an occasional passenger train. For the CTC session, communication to the dispatcher is via FRS radios. We use a 3 to 1 fast clock, which moves the action along. Car cards and waybills are used to direct car forwarding, and control is DCC using CVP's Easy DCC wireless and wired throttles. Smartphone throttle apps can also be utilized as controls. Here we see the interchange with the Kentucky Northern at Harlan Junction. We've moved into the coal country, and you can see uh, one of the coal tipples here at Island Springs. And we'll come back to Island Springs because one of the trains here is the one we'll use as an example as we do the, the demonstration of the CTC machine. Centralized Traffic Control, or CTC, allows the dispatcher to control signals and switches along a designated territory from a single control panel not necessarily near the area covered. Under CTC, all trains are of equal status, so there are no first class, second class, third class, or extra trains. Also, there are no written documents authorizing movement like train orders, track warrants, or DTC block authorities. The prototype LNN put in its first CTC um, in 1943, and the Eastern Kentucky had CTC by early 1949. The CTC board was located in company offices in Ravenna, Kentucky. The LNN Eastern Kentucky Division CTC board here that you see was originally built for the Southern Pacific for use on, in Roseburg, Oregon. It's a union switch and signal machine, and it was rebuilt for the Eastern Kentucky Division by Rod Loader. CTC is implemented from the north switch of Clemens to the north switch of Viper. Switch locks are not yet implemented. Handheld radios are used for communication between the dispatcher and the road crews. 
while a telephone is used for Yardmaster to dispatch conversations. Trains are identified using post-it notes while on the railroad. In the real railroad, they would use a, a train sheet, and we do have train sheets that we do use occasionally. For this video, we will set up a meet between two trains at Glenbrook. So Extra 109 South with two RS3s is a returning mine run at Island Springs with the destination of Glenbrook. It's been holding short of the roadway here at Island Springs to let traffic go through, but it's just delivered the empty hoppers to the coal tipple at Island Springs, picked up the loaded hoppers to take back to the marshalling yard. It needs to use the main to access the Fowler Coal Yard. Train 164 with lead locomotive 1229 and SD40 is the afternoon freight forwarder. It's moving across the Powell Creek Viaduct toward Eldridge Camp. Its final destination is Hazard. However, the, first it has to do some work in Dent. So we'll follow this train along as we set the CTC. We'll set the Eldridge Camp Train 164 to go into the siding at Glenbrook. So first we'll move switch 27 lever to reverse, and then signal 28 lever to the right so the train can proceed north. Next we'll make sure that switch 29 lever is set to normal, and signal 30 lever is set to the left so that the mine run can proceed south. Once these levers are set up correctly, then we can press the code buttons and send the instructions to the railroad. Here is signal 28 and switch 27 at South Glenbrook. Watch as the switch moves and the signal changes when the code button on the CTC panel is pressed. So signal 30 at North Glenbrook changes when the code button on the CTC panel is pressed. Now we can set the switch and signals between each train's destination and their current location, working from the destination back toward the trains. Make sure the lev switch levers are set for normal and the signal levers are set for the appropriate direction. Then press each code button. You'll notice that it takes a little bit of time before the, the lights come on the panel while the machine works. So the switches are then lined for the main to the siding and the signal aspect changes on the dwarf signal at South Island Springs. When Extra 109 South gets to the next signal, they'll see a yellow over red signal and it changes as they pass. As each train proceeds, the CTC panel shows their progress. 
a light will eliminate, illuminate when a train is in the block. Once each train enters the interlocking and the locomotives pass the signals, the signals are knocked down to red. And you'll notice that change on the panel as the train goes through the interlockings. So train 164 is approaching the north switch at Eldridge Camp. And you'll watch on the panel as it goes through the OS, the signals will be knocked down. Just like that. So here's train 164 coming down the grade into Glenbrook. You can see the Fowler marshalling yard, coal marshalling yard in the foreground. Train 164 will see a red over yellow signal indication showing the turnout line for the siding. As it goes through, it will knock down the signal. So following trains will have a red over red. If you note down the track, the mine run has already arrived and is holding the main. We can now set a route for train 164 to continue to dent. Work in dent is done from the siding, so we'll set switch 49 to reverse and signal 50 to north or the right. This can then be coded. We'll confirm the switches from Dent through Kyle's Ford and Island Springs, again working from the destination to the current location of the train on the siding at Glenbrook. And make sure that the t switches are normal and then set the signals for northward and code each one. Finally, we'll change switch 29 to reverse to allow train 164 to enter the main and set signal 38 to northward and code this. So as train 164 leaves Glenbrook, it's got a green on the dwarf, means it can exit the siding and retake the main. So there you have it. The two trains have safely passed each other and have reached or are on their way to their destination. We hope you have not only enjoyed this video, but learned a little bit about operation under centralized traffic control.